very much. Approval of the minutes, item 4A. So moved by Commissioner Carabelli, supported by Commissioner Sauger. All those in favor, please vote. Yes. Item five is public participation. Anyone from the public here wish to be heard? Anyone from the public wish to be heard? Anyone from the public? Seeing no one will close public participation. Item six is a departmental rec recommendations. Training services, Elevate USA. Uh, Mr. McKinnon is here to present on that. Commissioner Brown, good afternoon. How are you? Good afternoon, how are you today? I'm doing great. Ladies and gentlemen of the commission, thank you for having me this afternoon. Elevate is our, is our partner that provides us the diversity and inclusion training within the Macomb County for all of our employees. They do a fantastic job. And this year, as you may have seen to the all staff email last night, we are graduating to the next step of our diversity and inclusion training, which is tackling difficult conversations. What we see a lot of times throughout the county is different individuals don't understand that we all come from different backgrounds, different cultures, whatever that might be. And while there are times where people are not acting appropriate and they are not acting the way that we would expect them to act, Sometimes it's the way that they would have been expected to act in a different <coughs> setting. So we're trying to just make sure that our staff is aware of those different cultural things that require us to take a step back, identify what may be going on, and then expressly, ex expressly state what it is that we expect uh, our personal interactions to be. So we're looking forward to that happening this upcoming year. We have trainings all throughout the year. You are welcome to come to any one if you'd like to observe, visit, and uh, see what it is that we're doing with Elevate. With that, I would be happy to answer any questions. Is there any, this is the second phase, you had a session last year. What were the results of last year's activities? And is there any way that we can track any progress that, I mean, it's hard to track those type of issues because there's not any, but I mean, what's the feedback from last year's program? And, and our, I guess, what are your expectations for the coming year? I mean, what kind of feedback are you getting from the the, from the staff that are participating, do they did they give you feedback? Yes. Are there methods for them to get feedback without them being identified, so that they can do it independently, so that you get maybe a truer fashion of what what they think about it? Those are all fantastic questions. So we've been doing the Elevate training for the last three years, and that is that diversity and inclusion training. What we, we hear a lot of positive feedback because the presenters are strong, they do a nice job, they keep your attention, which are important things when it comes to training. But in addition, they're really providing some good information. What we do hear from people is like, I already know this, you know, I'm not, I don't need any more of this type of training because I'm well versed in this, which isn't always accurate, but we do get, if we're getting negative feedback, it's usually something like that. Something like, you know, this is a full day training and I've got a lot of things to do back at the ranch. A full day is a whole lot of time. We do take into account all of those different things, but as with uh, any time that you're trying to prevent something from happening, it's hard to, to quantify how much we avoided, how many uh, lawsuits we may have avoided, how many negative interactions we may have avoided, which is really what this training is provided for. We want to make sure that people feel included, safe, respected, and like they come to this county and everybody's treated with dignity. That's a big piece of this training and what we're trying to get across. I appreciate it. We've had problems with that. Well, we've, got to, we've lost our focus on that sometime in my tenure here, so it's good to see that this is uh, being done not just a spot, but consistently. So kudos to you and the department for doing that. Commissioner Kraft. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. How you doing, Andy? Hey, I'm doing fine, Commissioner. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> We're going to have fun. Um, question for you. So this is the handling difficult conversations segment, I guess. Is there, yes. can you swap in segments or is this like a set program as you go along that these are specific to the program as a whole? I'm trying to figure out the pieces of this. So I can share that with you. I'll send you an email after we're done. It'll outline exactly what we're going through. When we sit down with our uh, partners at Elevate, there are different modules that they plug in that they have already prepared that they've done elsewhere. And then we kind of put those together, kind of a buffet of options that we then create a full day training with them from those different pieces that we want to address here within the county. Okay, and is Elevate the only vendor I guess we're using for all of the diversity and inclusion training? They're the only vendor that we're using for on-site individualized in-person training. We of course have the uh, NeoGov that you just have recently right. gone through that are doing that's doing all of our different um, online training policy training 
And you're going to very soon see one come out either this Friday or two Fridays from then that is uh, creating a culture of civility that touches on these same sorts of issues. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm just going to tell you up front, I'm a no on this portion um, because I grew up handling difficult conversations my whole life and I didn't have to pay $65,000 to figure that out. So thank you, Andy. I have no problem with the program as a whole. I'm just not in it for this segment. And as you can see, Commissioner, we're not here yelling back and forth at each other, right. which sometimes with some of our staff. <laughs> Thank you, Andy. I appreciate that. <laughs> some, some of our staff, of course, would think that that, because of the way that they were raised and what they may have seen in their household, mm -hmm. they would think that's the way that you resolve a situation. Sure. As whoever can yell the loudest and can hit the hardest is going to prevail, and that's not what we expect around here. So sure. I appreciate that. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I, I do July. tend to argue by uh, seeing who's the loudest, hoping that will win me arguments, but it rarely does. But um, I, I'm looking at the, um, you know, there are essentially like 14 sessions if you add them up, it looks like to me. You know, if, ending up on a cost of like five or $6,000 a session if you break it down, uh, or you know, $5,000 a session or so if we break it down. And it sounds to me like, I, I wonder at least, and I, I realize there's a, uh, in today's environment, there's almost like a legal need, you know, to cover a lot of these topics and so forth. Um, but is this something that we could potentially do in house? I mean, we're basically telling people to be civil human beings, aren't we? And is that something that we could potentially do in house? I think that's boiling it down to a very base level. And I'm, I was trying to give an example of what we're doing as we're moving forward. That's easily um, taken up here because we could, sit, we could sit down and spend some time and talk about these types of things. Is it something that we could do in houses? The answer is always yes, if you spend the money on hiring somebody here in house. The problem with doing something in house, in my opinion, when it comes to this, is while we could hire somebody, they're not going to be the expert in the field necessarily. This is an organization that does this training nationwide. The gentleman that we use for our uh, training here in the county is a former Marine Corps, um, I think he was a sergeant major who then went to work for the EEOC and now owns this Elevate company that does these trainings nationwide. So he's really the expert in the field and he's bringing what he sees all over the country back here to Macomb County to work with us on those issues. If we did it in-house, we're really just regurgitating what we expect and if what we expect is violative of what we should be looking for on a nationwide cultural level, we could get into some trouble with that, I would say. So if we just have a different belief than what the standard would be out in the courts, we could get into some trouble with that. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. I understand there's, you know, there's, there's, there's legal ramifications, but you know, to me it just seems like it should be relatively basic stuff. You just treat your coworkers and everybody you interact with with you know, civility and respect, and that doesn't seem like it requires a bunch of sessions and $65,000 to tell people that. Uh, but you know, I, you're saying it's complicated in a lot of ways and there's a lot of expertise out there. I guess I wonder how, how much expertise it is just to you know, treat people with respect. But. So, Commissioner, if I may, yeah. with, with all due respect, if I may, if it was that simple, people would already be doing it. And so we have examples on a daily basis where people are not treating constituents with respect where constituents are not treating the, our staff members with respect. That respect piece goes both ways, in my opinion. If it was that simple, it, people would just do it. Again, to me, it goes back to, it's a misunderstanding because we all come from a different place on how you resolve conflict and how you want to be treated and how others want to be treated. That's more the issues that we're tackling with this. I agree, we, we want everybody to be treated with dignity, but unfortunately, not everybody comes in every day thinking that that's gonna be the end goal. Well, thank you very much. They're going to bring me in for a session on yeah, but. I'm nice <laughs> to everyone, but. And that's where the problem comes in, and that's where these discussions I think will help diffuse some of that. Commissioner Romano. Yeah, but. <laughs> thank you, Chair. Hi, Andy. Uh, hey, Commissioner. You know, the county here is a large, large amount of employees and, and staff people, and you being the human resource director, how many people have you had come to you and complain to the point that you felt this was a legal matter? Now, you've been around for how long now? Two years? Uh, just under two years, sure. 
Okay, so how many people have actually come to you within the county and said to you, Mr. McKinnon, uh, this guy made some lewd remarks for me and I don't appreciate it and can you do something about it? Mm -hmm. You're up. It usually doesn't come directly to me, but to my department, we've had three this week, if that helps. Who's it come to? It comes to the consultants that work with the particular department. So it, if it's in, uh, let's take the sheriff's department, for example, if something were to happen in the sheriff's department, it would usually get to me and Mazzini, who would then bring it back to our office and we would chat about it. The individual normally doesn't come directly to my office. They normally go to somebody who works within my office to report it. So how many have, could you ballpark, how many of these have you had since you've been around? I mean, is it a matter of a dozen? Is it a matter of 300? Uh, I'm trying to get a handle on this. I would say ballpark at least 100 a year. At least 100 a year? Yes. So, with some sort of a complaint in this area where people aren't being treated with the respect and dignity that they expect. I, I'm inclined, you know, I hear Commissioner Gillette and I hear Commissioner Kraft and and I understand where you're coming from also, but has it come to this that we, we have to tiptoe, I, uh, that, that we can't, I don't know. You know what, I don't know I'm going on this, but I, I tell you what, I, I think $65,000 is a lot of money to tell you to keep your hands off and your mouth shut, so. <laughs> That's all I got, thank you. Thank you, Commissioners. You know, this county was in a series of suits some years ago with a variety of personnel issues, and they were very costly to us. And part of the thing that we have our just we were we were negligent of, found negligent of by the court, was that we didn't have any type of program that even addressed any of these issues at all. They said, Well, what are you doing to to be proactive about providing a, a work environment that and these type of things help the would have helped us not pay out so much money in suits. I and I definitely believe that. And now this is a variety of topic areas, we each have our own opinion about each topic, but the whole general category is necessary, I think, for us, and it's in a direct response to the loss that we suffered some years ago. Marv was around, some of us were around those days, and uh, I, think it's I think it's a responsible thing for us to do. Plus, it's good for some employees, even though it's hard for us to imagine, you know, well, we see a lot of things in our time being commissioners, being politics all the time, but some people just don't see it the same way somebody else does, and they don't realize what they're doing may not be <laughs> appropriate. and. And sometimes people are really nice and they just been getting run over all the time and maybe there's some tools they could have that they don't have to take that. And there's ways for them to, to counteract it. So this is all good personnel issues. And the, this personnel department's really come a long way from when I started. I mean, they're proactive. They're every, every week I see you at least I'm sending out information about things that are pro-employee, about helping them do something with their life, their style, whatever it happens to be. There's a lot more outreach to our employees than there ever used to be through the HR department. And that's, and again, that comes as a result of hard won lessons by the losses we had to pay out because we weren't doing as much as we could. So this is being responsible, in my opinion. Mr. Brown, if I may. Yes. I appreciate that comment. We oftentimes in our office try to say that we, want, we try to do things because they're the right thing to do. Um, I think that this training is the right thing to do. But as Mr. Leonetti, I believe, would say, and Mr. Smith, one of the first things that we're going to hear in a interrogatory or deposition is, what training have you been provided? What did the county do? And so you're 100% correct. That's another reason that we would do it. We tr I, I could not agree with you more. And we would hear that absolutely. Thank you. Commissioner Haw. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I was glad uh, Commissioner Romano asked the question, not only how you say it, but what you say because of the sensitivity of the environments that we're living in today. Back in, uh, and Chairman Brown mentioned the lawsuits, GM went through something very similar. And that was the uh, reaction from the court, is where is your documented program? And they also had in there what, um, as results come forward to HR, what is the punitive reaction taken for those that have taken diversity training and then did not act accordingly to it? Uh, that was also mandatorily documented uh, by HR. Do you intend on doing something like that as well? We keep a record of all of the things that we do when it comes to punitive for people that complaints have been made against. So yes, absolutely. We know if they have been through the training, we know what trainings they have been through, and then if they have been accused of something that was specifically 
uh, covered in that training, we do take that into account. Also, we utilize training many times if people have not been through a particular training. A uh, good example is our EAP. If somebody has some sort of an anger issue and it results in discipline, we'll then require them to go to the EAP to address that issue. So it's not directly on point with this, but it is something that we do frequently. Thank you. And each one, what they also did is when somebody completed the training, they put a certificate into their jackets so that it was known that the training was done as well. Do you intend on doing something like that? So we either do the certificate of completion of training or uh, the, one of the little secrets with the mandatory EAP referral, you can't make somebody go to EAP. Mm -hmm. So if they refuse, the next time an issue comes up, that's taken into account as well. So we would review their file. They had an anger issue a year ago. They were disciplined for it. They've had an anger issue again. They refused to go to training. That would factor into our discipline decision. It would also factor into arbitration hearings, I would imagine, as well. Absolutely, or a lawsuit, for yeah, sure. I, that's been mentioned quite a few times, and 65000 is a lot of money, but I'm sure our corp counsel back there would tell you at any one of these given lawsuits dealing with HR issues, that's not what they ask for. Thank you, Chair. And the question is, how many man hours does the county spend while people are in these classes? How many man hours are spent while they're taking these classes that they could be doing something for other production? Yeah. How much? Yeah. I, 600 times 4,800. Yeah. I'll take 4,800. <laughs> yeah. It's, that is another thing that we do, some feedback that we get. Uh, department heads say, like, you know, we've got work to do. And they're absolutely correct. All of these people could be doing other work at the time that they're getting training, but that would go for any training that we have. You know, we have our deputies on the road for a year with a training officer, making sure that they can do the proper job that we expect. And while they're with an officer getting trained, we have two officers together as opposed to separate that could be covering twice as much area. So, well, the nice thing about government work is it's always going to be there, so it's not like you're going to be missing a deadline. Commissioner <laughs> Clanfeld. Thank you, Chair. When I put my name down, my original question was uh, regarding the courts, and, and is that something that is beneficial that you show that you have done this training? Um, and what made me think of it is how many times have we read in the newspapers about something outlandish that has happened in a department, and there's a lawsuit, and we know about it because it's in the newspapers, not even necessarily with the county. We'll read about another city, or and 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 turns out somebody's been harassed for months and months and months, and the uh, supervisor has never once documented it, and you just wonder how that could happen. So that was that was why I put my name down. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Kleinfeld. Commissioner Smith. Chairman Smith. Thank you. Thanks, Andy. I, it, most of you covered everything I was going to talk about. Legally is the big reason that you have to do this. I, I, I used to go through this with the fire department all the time, and I think the thing that I noticed the most is that you're really not changing people that have a propensity to be like they are. What you're doing is allowing some of the people to see some of the um, actions that they can take in response to that. And I think that's the biggest thing is some of these, some of people that are constantly being barraged by whether it's a, a you know the, the public or you know a, a rude co-worker or whatever they start getting an idea that well I don't have to put up with this I can actually do something about it and this is how because I mean we all know people like this we were sitting these these um, <laughs> these uh, classes and realize that the only people paying attention were the people that probably needed it the least absolutely and the people that needed the most go ah this is BS, whatever it is. But so anyway, thanks, Andy. I just, I just wanted to point that out. Thanks, Commissioner. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Commissioner Gillette. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just a quick follow-up question. Uh, Commissioner Romano asked about how many of these incidences that you sometimes get complaints about and so forth. But I'm curious how many of them are related. I mean, the, the title is you know, diversity and, incl and inclusion, which I tend to correlate with uh, uh, you know, racial animosity or incidences or um, or uh, potentially sexual harassment, or that might not be inclusion or diversity related specifically. Uh, are we talking about dealing with primarily incidences revolving around issues of 
race and gender, uh, or are we talking about people uh, having complaints about their coworkers or bosses about them being rude or mean or that are not specifically related to diversity necessarily or, or inclusion necessarily. Mm -hmm. When you gave an example of that number that you have to uh, deal with you know, on an annual basis, how many of those are related to diversity and inclusion as we think of I mean, How many are related to this person's being you know, uh, rude or this person's being uh, har har uh, irresponsible or something? I think it's probably about 50-50. So if we're, if we're cutting one section and we're saying it's gender, uh, orientation, background from uh, you know, uh, where, where Cult you are coming from, cultural, yeah. uh, sex, you know, male, female, if we're talking about race, those types of things are probably 50% of the complaints. The other 50 are that kind of bullying behavior, uh, rude, inconsiderate, those types of things. And that's why I use that example of you know, the way that people solve conflict oftentimes is how they saw it being solved within their household. That is a diversity and inclusion thing because it can be socioeconomic as well. And in some areas, the way that people resolve conflict is with attorneys, right? In other areas, they resolve it with fistfights. And we need to express what it is that we expect here as a county and how we're going to resolve conflict. And so that's why we, when we talk about diversity and inclusion, it even touches on socioeconomic and many, many different items, not so, just race and sex. And so do these, uh, did this company deal primarily almost exclusively with issues of uh, gender, national origin, race, or do they deal with conflict re resolution and bullying issues broad, more broadly speaking? All of it, yeah, they, they handle all of that. So the gentleman used to work for the EEOC, okay. which deals primarily with protected complaints. But then he also has worked in other areas where he's dealing with those uh, issues where people are not treating each other with civility. And that's a big problem. That's a problem that we have from time to time here. And perhaps uh, just moving forward, I would encourage maybe the, uh, your department or this company or whatever it is to maybe title the, uh, what they're providing to, to reflect that. So it might be diversity, inclusion, conflict resolution, and you know, expected behaviors or something broader. If that's, what, if that's half of what they do, you know, it seems like we're by focusing just on you know half of these type of complaints, it almost sounds like you know that we have a severe problem with that. When in reality, they're broader than just that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, just a suggestion moving forward that may be more appropriately named. And that's why, formerly, it was diversity and inclusion training. Moving forward, it is that handling difficult conversations because we want people to know as they walk out the door, they're going to have some tools that they can use going back to the office the very next day. It's not just some theoretical thing, which is good and we need but it's also specific tools that you're gonna walk out the door with. And so that's the next iteration of where we're going. Well, it might encourage more people to be invested in learning about it if they think, well, I'm not a racist, so I don't have to pay attention, but they might have other types of conflicts or other things that this type of training would help them with. But because it's titled that way, they think it's only about that. Yeah, you know? it's much easier to say, hey, this is about people being jerks and that guy's a jerk. This is gonna tell me how to treat that right. guy. So maybe be, right, so maybe you know, jerk training or something. <laughs> or not training, but <laughs> all right, thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Gillette. Commissioner Sauger. Yeah, I just want to tell you one of the best diversity training classes I ever attended when I was on the Sheriff's Department, put on by these by your department, was we had about three people from Jackson Prison who spent a lot of years in there. And we just went back and forth with everything going on in general in society, and everybody gained more respect and more information than any other way than to get it right from the horse's mouth. And since you've been up there, and we, I've seen a lot of great directors in your de at your department, you've opened a door quite a bit. Because when you see, mention that word, human resources, don't even go near them. Somebody's watching you. But you've opened a door, and I'm glad to see it. Thank you. Thanks, Commissioner. Thank you. There's no other speakers. I uh, need a motion to approve this request. Moved by Commissioner Duje, supported by Commissioner Ha. Please vote. We're approving this to go to full board. Yeah. Yes, it goes. So you get another shot. You can vote against before you voted against for it, <laughs> <laughs> or vice versa. Yeah. Motion passes eleven to one. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Commissioner. Now, Thank you, Commissioner. You got one more thing. You got a contract settlement for us? No, excuse me. That's John Shapka. Excuse me. Six B, a settlement agreement with. Davis Macomb County and Sergeant Justin Locke. Mr. Shapka.
Good afternoon, Commissioners. I'm appearing here before you to gain your agreement in a proposed settlement of a Sheriff's Office excessive force case. Uh, plaintiff in this matter is Kevin Michael Davis. He was loitering around a gas station on northbound Gratiot, uh, across the street from where the pawn shop is in that vicinity. Uh, the Sheriff's car saw him, approached, he took off running. Believe it or not, the Supreme Court says if you see the police and you run, they get to chase you down to find out why you ran. It's not an exception to probable cause, it's an extension of the Terry stop. You know, you're acting suspicious, we get to find out why. Unfortunately, this turned into a, a bit of a physical tussle. Mr. Davis ended up on the ground with a broken collarbone. There is a typo on the second page that says it was a clavicle, the shoulder blade, it's not, it's the shoulder, uh, the collarbone. He contends that he was not only tackled to the ground, but tackled after he stopped flight and turned to face the officer and surrendered. And then the officer punched him in the face, or the shoulder, I'm sorry, the shoulder three or four times. The officer's story is, no, he was still fleeing. I tackled from behind. Sorry, it was on pavement. He broke his collarbone. The fact of injury by itself is never uh, alone evidence of excessive force. The question is, is the force justified under the circumstances, not whether something or someone got hurt? Uh, plaintiff's counsel in this case early on was demanding quarter million dollars. As the case developed, went through discovery, that quarter million dollars number just evaporated and evaporated. Their final demand to settle is $18,000. This is $2,000 less than it'll cost the county to bring in its two experts, one a force expert and second a uh, orthopedic surgeon to refute uh, the seriousness of the dam of the injury, the permanency of the injury, and even to, to attest to the fact that how easy it is to break the collarbone. It's a very tiny bone. So I'm asking for permission to settle this for the 18,000. As I said, it's 2,000, approximately 2,000 less than our out-of-pocket costs just to try the case. Be happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you. Uh, I don't have any speakers. Okay, Commissioner Leonetti. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I probably know the answer to this question. Was there a body cam available on this one? The, the, there was a body cam. It was not turned on. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's always small things wrong with every case. <laughs> Thank you. Commissioner Gillette. Thank you. And that was a question I was going to ask initially, you know, body cam. It's, I wonder if we have any, uh, any procedures dealing there is, with... There is a policy. I helped write it. And there was a violation of the policy. Okay. That's, that's good. And then I guess the next question I would wonder, you know, $2,000 savings is not very much if we believe that we're in the right, if we believe the officer's in the right, and that I'd rather risk losing, you know, I'd rather lose two grand, but obviously the, the possibility is losing substantially more if, if, the, if, if we are in the wrong or if the court rules are in the wrong. So I guess I'm just, based on your recommendation, you recommend that we settle because we're, you're, we're just not certain what the outcome would be in court. We don't know how strong the case is. is that we're, we're never, Before, we're, before you go any further, that our memorandum is an attorney-client privilege memorandum, and if we were actually going to get into the details of any issues regarding our side of the case, it should, have been, it should be in closed session. I just want to say that. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. I appreciate that. I, I won't say anything that would be considered privileged. Okay, thank you. The $2,000 settlement, or the $2,000 savings is just off off of our out-of-pocket costs. Mm -hmm. There's the uncertainty of the verdict, and quite frankly, I've walked in court with the best winners and I've lost, and I've walked in with the most miserable losers and I've won. You can't predict what a jury will do. So there always is that specter of a, a higher verdict. In this case, uh, this is a federal filed case. If plaintiff prevails, we also automatically pay all of the attorney's fees back to the day that they filed the action. So that's, granted, Plains Council didn't do very much work on this case, but twenty-five to 50000 right there. Okay, and since you wrote the policy, yes. what are the penalties for malfunctioning body cameras? Uh, there's no penalty for malfunctioning. There's a penalty for violating the policy by not turning it on and keeping it on. That's an internal disciplinary matter to the sheriff's office. Okay. The policy, uh, as with most, don't carry its own penalty. They just pro process matters under the uh, disciplinary system that they have. Well, I hope they're adequate as far as disciplinary. I worry that it may be not because that's unfortunate when that happens if there's not a substantial enough of a penalty. 
So thank you. You know, the body cams are fantastic. They, the brand make model software is crystal clear. The sound is crystal clear. Problem is it's on a body and if you're moving, the camera's all over the place and you can't see anything. Yeah, but at least it's on. Yeah, <laughs> granted, at least it's on. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Gillette. Commissioner Carabelli. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Real quick. Yes. Yes. I turn around and I heard the conversation about the HR training for the regular employees. And I brought up on every one of these lawsuits is number one, identify what the problem is. Number two, we rectify the problem if it's training, if it's discipline, whatever it is. And for us to be notified, you know, when we're going to make a decision. And, and the reality is, here's a perfect example. If there is a penalty, if it's X amount of days off, whatever, we're, we're taking taxpayers' dollars, and what are we doing to prevent that incident of happening again? So here's the training aspect of it where I, I said before that in any one of these cases, the department head, be it the sheriff or whatever office it is, should be in here with us in closed session and explaining to us what, okay, things happen and things are going to happen, but what are we doing to prevent these things from happening again? To protect the taxpayer so you said there's an internal violation that's being dealt with mm -hmm. okay no there's an internal violation that could be dealt with I don't know that it has been Look, and, and here's my thing we're gonna make a decision and if it's dealt with or not we don't know that and yet we're just taking dollars and we're paying off lawsuits and this is a small one compared to the lawsuits that we've had in the past for excessive force or whatever it may be what training on top of this have we done? So I guess my thing is, is that I, I'm getting as you do again as we do this, and I know it's the right thing to save the money, but what are we doing to benefit the taxpayer at the end? What training, what stop gaps, what are we doing going forward? And again, I don't have the answers to that. Thank you. The age old, the age -old question, Commissioner Carabelli, as long as I've been up here, you know, What's the independent elected official doing about the lawsuits in his department? And are they doing enough to, to correct them? And, and, and they and may be, but we don't know. I know we don't. And we're supposed to approve well, financial settlements. We need to be nicer to them. Maybe they'll come up here and not be so afraid to come up and talk to us at the invitation of their corporation council. <laughs> but pigs will fly first. Commissioner, any, Commissioner Leonetti, see? We, yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Just kind of piggybacking off of Commissioner Carabelli. I mean, John, have you ever been asked to go over to the Sheriff's Department and just kind of just give a brief rundown on these policies that you've written to say, hey, look, guys, you know, get them all the deputies in the room and say, you know, do this, do this, do this, do this. Uh, you know, have you had that opportunity? Have you been asked to do that? I actually have been over there as a training authority on several topics, including excessive force, uh, command responsibility, uh, supervisory liability. A host of other topics not talking about a policy I'm here to talk to you about policy X but a, a bigger uh, legal picture which is which will incorporate policy positions along with state law and federal law positions you know and again I'm not I'm not telling you anything that you might not know or might even think about doing but kind of going on with Commissioner Carabelli says you know this should be an example that should be brought up at the next time you're in there with a bunch of deputies and say, hey, look, you know, it's important that you turn that camera on. Not, I think nine times out of ten, it helps us out. Do you know what I mean? More than it hurts us. I think eight out of ten, we yeah. win just on the camera. Yeah. I, I was watching one two days ago uh, answering a FOIA. And quite frankly, just at a walking pace from the scout car into the uh, probation office, I actually got motion sick watching that video because the camera's bouncing around so much. But there's enough there that it will clear us right. if there's ever a yeah. lawsuit. So, I, you know, I hate to string up the deputy and use him as an example. We don't have to mention any names, but we have to say there's this particular case that cost us this amount of dollars. So, you know, it, it behooves you, you know, when you come in here and you say you guys want raises, when you say you need more benefits and there's contracts, you know, this is money that's going out the window when you're not following some of these policies. We clear so. all this with the sheriff's office. Before we even put it on paper, we get there. You know, tacit agreement. We don't settle things behind the client's back, so they're aware. Hey, Don, is there more people? I'm sorry. Yes. Can I uh, point a privilege? I mean, if we keep discussing this, are are we going anywhere that we really shouldn't be about any case or future case? Should we go into closed session if we have to continue talking about 
methods and problems and there's a whole discussion actually. The, I think things have got too far afield. right so, so I generally generally no if I'm just discussing what's already a matter of public record and the pleadings and things um, there's all there are always dynamics that don't appear in, in print on paper and I don't discuss those but if we go any deeper in this one I'm gonna have to ask for a close Commissioner up. Doozy what's on the case you want to settle or not <laughs> Well, I don't Please like I, any any part of this, but I think we should. What I'd like to suggest, after everything is said and done, that uh, you take a look at what's being done with this particular deputy, uh, if he's going through training or whatever, and then in either in closed session or in a memorandum or whatever, let us know what was done and what is being done to alleviate these kind of situations. And I think that would uh, uh, make Commissioner Carabelli and, and a whole bunch of other people on this board a little more comfortable about it. Uh, I realize it's $18,000. I'm not a big fan of uh, uh, how this came down, but if, if, as long as there, we can learn a lesson from it and this doesn't happen again, then there could be something positive happening for the county because of it. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Thank Commissioner you, Mr. Uh, Duge, or Commissioner Mr. Sauger, excuse me. Yeah, before all this discussion started, I just thought it would be appropriate for you to find out from over there what happened before we crucify a deputy or the department in general. Here, here. You, you find out what happened, then let us know. And the second part is, what did this guy start off at? What, how many millions dollars to a lawsuit? Oh, he wanted a quarter million dollars. How many? Two, 250,000. Okay, that's 000. quite a bit. And it come down? Yes. I'm all for settling it. Thank you. Thank you. Need a motion to, uh, motion to send us to full board? Oh, Commissioner Romano. You know, let me just, let me support Commissioner Sauger real quickly here. We're being Monday morning quarterbacks here, guys. It's a guy that fleed. They didn't know if he's armed. Uh, the, the adrenaline's pumping. Uh, they're more concerned about their personal safety. They got families just like we have, and, and we're trying to throw this guy underneath the bus. And I think it's wrong. And I think, Mr. S I think Commissioner Sager, right. let's get all the details before we say this guy needs diversity training. This guy should go to this thing and learn about this. And this guy, should. no, I, I don't think so. We got to be there in that action and see what's happening before we would say to somebody, you know, you shouldn't do that. Maybe you should have patted him on the head or held his hand and say, you're a bad boy. Don't do that. No, I don't think so. We're being Monday morning quarterbacks, and I don't think we should judge this, this uh, deputy the way we have. That's all I have. Thank you. You can go now. I'll make a motion. Thank you. Motion by Romano. Supported by Commissioner Hall to forward this to full board. Very good. Please vote. Motion passes. Thank you. All right, uh, new business, a new business. Any uh, public participation, anyone from the public being wish to be heard? Anyone from the public? Anyone from the public seeing no one? Need a motion to adjourn? Moved by Duje, supported by Gillette. All those in favor of the adjournment, say aye or oh, aye, aye, vote, please. Okay, two minutes. Two minutes before we uh, move to uh, records and public safety. Two minutes. Two minutes to get set up. Judge's time is valuable, let's don't keep him here too long.